Uh, hello everyone again this is Kevin Drury and uh, we're a few hours removed from my previous blog when my grandson Ryder was calling for help. His pioneering and uh, investigating and uh, exploration got him into a little bit of a jam and uh, he needed rescuing from his peepaw and uh, to me it was just a really poignant moment of how we are as Christians you know we we step out in faith we we launch out into something bigger than than uh, who we are and what we're used to doing and sometimes we get stuck it reminds me of Peter you know Peter made a bold move uh, when Jesus invited him to come out onto the water interesting the other disciples you know didn't leave the boat but Peter did and uh and he got out on the water and got into some trouble. And everybody kind of makes fun of Peter. They laugh at him uh, for his uh, failure to walk on water. Uh, but we lose sight of the fact that he was bold enough to attempt it. The other thing that we lose sight of is the fact that Jesus was right there to rescue him. And uh, probably Jesus learned a lot about Peter. Uh, you know, probably as much as Peter learned about Jesus in that moment. And so, anyway... I just wanted to continue a little bit about the church culture issue. Um, and, uh, you know, in regard to the prenatal and the neonatal uh, care of people, you know, I was thinking um, in the hours since uh, I had to sign off last that that there are hospitals, uh, you know, there are probably hospitals designed just for those kinds of intensive care units. But most hospitals who have... Uh, prenatal and neonatal care units, they have units, they have sections of their hospital. And if you would allow me the freedom to do it, to say aspects of their ministry, because they're really ministers uh, to the sick, to the hurting. And so they have units, you know. The entire uh, mission of the hospital is not designed to cater just to the to those who are in need of neonatal uh, or prenatal care. And so anyway, uh, you know, our churches, our churches should not be designed to take care of only those who are seeking God or those who are immature in God. You know, I, I've pondered this a lot and have been pondering pondering it again in the few hours since uh, I last blogged and um, I was thinking about the fact that biblical Christianity the Christianity that Jesus started the Christianity that he handed off to the early disciples the apostles and then those who were in the broader context of his disciple ship um, there, there weren't two different kinds of disciples. There, there, there wasn't the A team and the B team or the C team or the D team. You know, there, there wasn't the mature and the immature. They were just disciples, and disciples uh, means disciplined learner. And so these disciples that Christ chose and began to pour himself into came into their discipleship being prepared for supernatural ministry. And, and so, you know, Christ didn't design his kingdom culture to be one uh, to, to cater to the ones who weren't interested in the supernatural, the ones who weren't sure about whether they were interested in the supernatural. He just invited them in and then began to train them in the supernatural. And so, you know, I've been thinking about it, and I've been thinking, you know, I just can't imagine Jesus calling people out of the multitude of people who were gathered around him and saying, okay, hey, you people who are really gung-ho about following me and what I'm doing, you come on over here. Now, the rest of you that aren't sure, that are just kind of seekers trying to, they're just you just want to hang out, hang around to see if it's something you might be interested in. You stay way back in the back because, you know, we don't want you to get any collateral damage from, from this supernatural activity and the warfare 
that it's going to uh, enlist. Uh, Christianity attracts warfare. Well, that's because Jesus sent his disciples out as sheep into a world that was designed to come against them. And so, you know, our churches have got to have that built into them because that's the way Christ, the head of the church, designed his church. He said it this way, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In other words, the church is to assault the gates of hell. The church is not a place where we gather together to have, you know, fellowship, even though fellowship is a part of it. It's not designed to, to be a place where people gather together, you know, to get business connections. It's not for that. It's for the Father's business, and the Father's business is to destroy the works of the devil. The Father's business is to bring restoration and transformation to the planet. And so, you know, as I've, as I've just continued to think through this, I just, I want to encourage you. You know, if you're a church leader, or if you're in a church where the leadership has designed, uh, you know, the culture to, to kind of keep everything smooth and calm and, you know, collected, and can I say, under their control, uh, you might want to rethink that, because that's not the church that Jesus established. It's not the church Jesus is building. Jesus is building a warship, and it's built on the basis of an apostleship, and apostles by nature are people of courage, and they advance and God expects, and Jesus expects, his church to advance his kingdom against the gates of hell. Anyway, just more thoughts uh, from Kevin Drury. And again, thank you for uh, watching this. Uh, I invite your comments. Uh, you know, if you're going to criticize, be kind. Uh, but I'm even open to critique. God bless you, and have a great day.